In order to add a case for a new patient, when you highlight their name, you go to the Notes section at the top, and then to add the case. So just remember, a case is an episode of care for a patient. You always have to add a case before you can start documenting for the visits. You will click Add in the top right, and now you get the case information. Your office name will be listed here. The different profiles, choose the appropriate one. Default is like a geriatric Medicare patient. There's two pediatric evals. A basic is more of a stripped down eval. And then you also have a wellness document, which is a quick one page soap note for anybody that does not need any billing or coding or super bills. You can use a wellness and quickly document. You will then, after choosing the profile, name the case whatever you want to name it, low back pain, some people will do the month and the year, that's your personal choice. Choose the primary insurance from your list. <clears throat> Choose the referring physician. The case date will be filled in. The assigned therapist, you will, can assign it to anyone in your practice. A secondary therapist can be assigned as well. Case type, this is where you're telling the system about the payer source for this patient. If it's a Medicare Part B patient, mark it Med B. That puts all of Medicare rules into effect. If they're self-pay, indicate it self-pay. If it's private insurance, HMO, PPO, Medicaid, this is kind of a catch-all for any private insurances. But if you also want to be more specific, HMO, PPO, Medicaid, you can make it your own separate case type. Workers Comp Auto will also be listed for you. So you choose whatever is the appropriate case type. Place of service should be filled in for your practice, but if you do multiple place of service, you can change it if you wanted to. Graph and display, we keep that usually as CPT and visits. Um, for to track those for you. If you have ahead of time information for the patient about any past medical history or their diagnosis, you could add it here if you wanted to. So where it says past medical history, I could just start typing, add any past medical history that I was able to obtain from their chart. Same with past surgical. And if I already know, like, the medical diagnosis, I could come in and add that in here, search for Parkinson's, add it by clicking on it, and then click add to medical diagnosis, and that would then be automatically brought over into the eval. So anything you add when you set up the case will automatically autofill when you do your evaluation. And then down here, it lets you set up different rules for the case. So on the right are the billing rules. Now apply KX, you should only mark that if someone is already over the threshold for Medicare and you want to apply the KX from day one. For private insurance, um, you can then decide to follow Medicare's eight minute rule for billing or follow the AMA rule and it would get filled in for you based on the billing rule. Bill, medical, and treatment diagnosis. If you want both the medical and treatment diagnosis from your list to sh appear on the claims, you can mark this if you prefer. If you know this insurance applies the assistant modifiers, CO and CQ. Now, like I said, if this was Medicare, these would automatically be filled in and marked correctly for Medicare. But for private insurance, if you know, you can mark those. If there's any other specific modifiers, that you need to attach. The regular modifiers will already be attached. You do not need to list the 59 mod modifier, the um, GP, GO type modifiers, those will already be attached for you. These are any additional, like the 95 to indicate it was done by telehealth or any other of these special modifiers, you can apply those. And then on the left, you can also put in any other specific rules for the notes. If 
this is a therapist that has not been credentialed yet with a certain insurance and you need the notes co-signed, you can mark that to require the co-sign. If you want them to always fill in the time in, time out, you can mark that box. If you want to make them have the appointment on the schedule for that day in order to finalize a note, that's what that would check schedule mark works for. Disable carryover. That's rare that you're going to want to mark that. That's if you don't want the note information to carry over from note to note. Progress note min max. Like I said, if this was Medicare, it will automatically alert for your 10th visit progress note. But for private insurance, if you also want to give yourself an alert for a progress note to be required, you can come in and maybe say, remind me to do a progress note between visit 7 and 9, 8 and 10, whatever you want. You can give that yourself an alert. Daily note CPT. You don't need to mark this. This is only going to um, show the other daily note CPT codes and allow co-treatment. That is if someone's going to be doing co-treatments with multiple providers to allow that and count start. This is where if you are bringing in your notes from another EMR and maybe you've already done 12 notes so far in the previous EMR and you want them to start counting in our EMR for note being labeled number 13, you can do that and it would automatically start counting at that one. If these are new patients, you don't need to do that. It would automatically start counting normally for you. And then you'll just then click save. And then under the notes for that patient, as you can see now, the PT is in front of their name. That means they have an active case. And then under notes, you'll see the active case is now listed.